is it a synthetic mRNA? I, I guess I, I feel like people get uh, they associate like vaccine with like, like almost synthetics or something that's like mm. foreign or bad in their in their body. Mm. But is this something that's right. perhaps a natural occurring process that pe that you're giving to people rather than because I think and even like with people who are like against vaccines or maybe are skeptical, they think, oh well, you're injecting mercury into me or formaldehyde or all mm. these other things too. And maybe perhaps with mRNA, they're thinking the same thing too, where this is a, a synthetic mRNA. Yeah. Um the thing is is that um so one, these other molecules, like I think if you look at the list of what's in at least the Pfizer vaccine, I haven't seen the list of what's in the Moderna vaccine. I'm guessing they're very, very similar. Um What's in the Pfizer vaccine is, is mRNA, um, which is like the business end of it, obviously, uh, lipids. And there's a bunch of different lipids that are in there, which are essentially used to help your cells take up the mRNA. And then there's like salt solutions. And I think there's like a little bit of sucrose, so sugar. Um, and that's it. Uh, and so... Um, so there's nothing that's like particularly scary sounding. And, and I guess, you know, I would argue also that some of the stuff that sounds scary isn't actually scary in, in certain circumstances. Um, and as far as like whether or not synthetic mRNA is actually any different than like in a regular mRNA, um, there's really no difference. Um, and I'm not exactly sure that, like the industrial processes by which the mRNA is actually made in this case, but uh, I, there's like physically, like if I showed you mRNA that like I took from a human cell and mRNA that was made in a, in a Petri dish by bacteria, um, if the codes are identical, I, I don't think there's a way you could actually tell at all, like in any phys like the atoms are exactly the same, you know? Um, so it, there's no difference as far as that is concerned. Yeah. Um, and I think we were just talking about, oh, mutations and just speaking of vaccines and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure this is maybe something people are worried about is like, if there's mutations happening in these variants, I know there's like the, the UK variant, there's like a South Africa variant and I think Brazil one at this point. Um, you know, do the vaccines work against those? Uh, it, it, I'm sure it's a question that a lot of people have been thinking about. And uh, and the answer is like probably. Um, and sort of the other thing. So one, the way these vaccines work, and, and I've been sort of like, uh, you know, I guess sparing a lot of the detail as far as how your body is actually killing the virus and how it actually learns to kill them and stuff like that. But it all has to do with how well things interact. And same thing with infectivity is like the reason why a virus can gain a mutation that makes it more infectious it is now like what whatever mutation just gained makes its spike protein essentially interact uh, stronger with the receptors on your cells. And so uh, and so essentially just in a similar way, the vaccine that you have uh, is is now training your body to interact in a similar way to those spike proteins. Um, but even if those spike proteins change slightly, maybe that interaction becomes slightly weaker. But like even a slightly weaker, um, I think uh, you know Dr. Fauci called this like the the cushion effect, um, where it's like there there is some like there is some cushion essentially there where if the vaccine if the spike protein changes maybe that interaction between the antibodies your body has made against the the spike protein maybe that interaction is slightly weaker but still is helpful definitely um, and so maybe it's like slightly less able to to you know like and, and maybe it's slightly less effective against that type of uh, of covid but like is still you know probably fine unless that spike protein continues to accumulate mutations to which it's like unrecognizable to the, to the vaccine but i don't think we're there yet at all um and uh and i guess i'm, I'm really <laughs> talking here but uh, another no, thing fine. i wanted to say real quick is uh the one thing that they recommend also is, is this is actually a reason these these variants is actually a reason why people should get vaccinated actually like if you're worried about these variants and and you know i'm sure some people maybe think like why the, why the heck am i going to get vaccinated if if it's like useless or whatever um the thing is one it still protects you against the original the the og covid 19 strain yeah. um and uh and and the thing is like these mutations like i said these happen as viruses replicate and so if more and more people get, immune, get, get uh, vaccinated against the virus, then the virus has fewer hosts to replicate in and thus fewer mutations will be happening. Mm. Um, and that's something that, that is something to keep in mind in that like if the, if the pandemic were more under control, um, then you would actually see fewer of these variants emerging because fewer viruses are actually like mute, you know, replicating at any given time essentially. So because the because the virus is the opportunity to go to so many hosts, it's starting to learn more, not learn, but essentially figure out or mutate more. And with more mutation yeah. means the chances of mutating in a wrong way is going to increase. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and mutation, yeah, like you, you, I know you sort of tried not to use the word like figure out there. And, and that is, that is correct in that like essentially mutation is completely random. And you can imagine it like, you know, if you're, if you're, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something maybe more right, like playing the lottery or something like that. You know, if you have a billion chances to play the lottery, chances are you'll, you'll, you know, you, if you got a billion tickets, then you'll probably maybe win. Yeah. Um, but if you had, a thousand tickets, then your chances obviously go down much more. And this is the same way where by allowing that, by the pandemic infecting so many people, the virus is essentially playing the lottery a lot and, you know, gets lucky every once in a while. Um, but if there were very fewer people infected at a time, then the virus actually would not accumulate mutations as quickly. And that's the other thing too, is like once, you know, I, you know, not sure how you know, they say maybe by the end of this year, the pandemic will be more or less under control. Once we get to that point, then we really won't have to worry about mutations in the virus as much anymore because the number of like, you know, replications that are happening at any given time by the virus is actually very, very few.